Hickok 45 here, and I just happen to be in a primitive mood this week. Yeah, it's just that kind of week. I think I'll go retrieve it. Oh yeah, you never know, I might need it. I might need to ward off an attack or something. Good old throwing axe, I really enjoy these things. And I was really just gonna throw it once, but I just noticed, uh, <laughs> You know, John, we were going to shoot that pot with a rifle, but I, I just can't resist. <laughs> oh, boy, this is going to be stupid. Oh, look at that. I hit that sucker. <laughs> I quit. I'm going home. That's the end of the video. Life is good. Now, we've got some other things to do here. <laughs> like I said, I've been uh, feeling a little bit primitive this week. I went up to Friendship, Indiana. To the muzzle loading uh, event there the national shoot i don't shoot there but i uh pick up supplies enjoy the ambiance the smell of sulfur in the air and uh, if you like black powder uh and you might since you probably saw the title of this video and knew that it would involve black powder and came to it and clicked on it well as you know there's no clickbait around here we do what we say <laughs> Uh, this is uh, the 1853 Enfield Chapter 2, and I've been looking forward to getting it back out and shooting it, and I knew you'd be mad if I didn't invite you along. So let's put a cap on this thing. Uh, I actually have the barrel loaded. The barrel is loaded. Put a musket cap on it. Cock it. Let's do a little more pot smoking. Let's see how it works with a, a mini bullet. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah a little bit of smoke there i really i thought i missed it i really did the trigger is really heavy on this you probably remember my uh my saying that from the first video with it and it, it catches me off guard sometimes and i actually flint i thought i sensed a little bit of a hang fire on that too maybe maybe i didn't but yeah i hit the thing it just didn't blow it up of course so the old 53 infield. We're going to have a little fun with it, and we hope you'll hang around, enjoy it with us. And, uh, and also go to the description, and if you're not an NRA member and you're so inclined to join, I hope you are, uh, click on the link down there and go through our link to the Hickok 45 link uh, at the NRA and get a discount, okay, for one year, three years, five years, okay? Again, not perfect, but, boy, we need to be members, okay? and uh, do that. Now, this is not a new firearm that we picked up from Bud's Gun Shop, you know, for a review. <laughs> but we appreciate everything they do for us. Send us a lot of guns that we request, uh, that, that you all request. That's kind of the way it works, you know. Not always, but quite a few of them. The requests come from you all. Um, they build up and they build up. And finally, if I'm, even if I'm pretty stupid about it, I say, well, you know what? I'm not sure what that firearm is. And I might not even like it, but we're getting a lot of requests. So then I get on my computer and I email uh, budsgunshop.com and they send us one to do for, you know, uh, the lender, uh, loaner, you know, for a video. But, uh, yep, this is the 58 or the 53 Enfield. And uh, if you haven't seen the first video on it, stop what you're doing. You know, click stop, and go to the description after you've joined the NRA down there and click on the first video because i definitely will put it in there if i forget you remind me please okay because you want to you want to learn more about the history of this if you're not familiar with it okay because i go into i don't know everything about everything or about this but i'll give you some of the basics of uh who used these in the civil war how they got here and a little bit about it okay and one day we'll do a comparison maybe between this and the springfield but 58 caliber shoots the mini ball Basically, I shoot pretty much the same balls, mini balls, in this that I shoot in the Springfield, which you have seen too, I hope. Uh, but you might not have. You know, if you're new to shooting and you just discovered our weird videos recently, you haven't really seen all that many firearms videos on YouTube or anything. Uh, we have done a lot of historical firearms like, like this, and several of them are muzzle loaders, okay? And uh, there's a lot of other people who do some good stuff with them as well. But we get them out here and shoot them and give you a little bit of uh, information and history about them. So, so please uh, check that out before you watch this one. Now I'll know, I will know, uh, you know, we have sensors and we can tell if you're watching this video without watching the first one. And, you know, there could be a penalty, it could be a fine. 
All right, now here's what I have to watch, as you know. While I'm talking, I have to make sure I do everything correctly and I don't dry ball the thing. And okay, we've got our half cock. Should be pretty clear by now. I've discussed that in every single muzzle loader video. How I like to let all the embers just burn out and uh, kind of thing. Never had any trouble with my method. Some people like to uh, keep the cap on there and uh, the hammer down so no oxygen can get in there and that sort of thing. And I'm just the opposite. I want to make sure if there is an ember in there, it's gone. Okay. Because, uh, you know, it, uh, the reason for that and the concern is you don't want fire down in there if you're dumping powder in. You don't want to turn this little thing into a little bit of a grenade, do you? Okay. That's why you don't pour out of the can. Okay. And best to keep it a little bit of distance when you're doing that. Uh, all right. Put the powder in first, then a the ball, mini ball. I got a couple different sizes. They both seem to work. Uh, these fit a little bit tighter and they might be a little better on the but uh, neither one seems to have a problem. The, uh, the bore is in decent shape. This thing is made in 62 and uh, 1862, okay? <laughs> Even if it was 1962, that would be a while back, wouldn't it? So pretty cool, pretty cool. Where's the Federal ammo? Huh? Federal didn't furnish the ammo today. They, they don't like us anymore. No, just kidding. <laughs> we appreciate Federal's help, but I don't think they offer mini balls so get on the stick now federal you need to be making mini balls minet balls excuse me you know if you're a frenchman you would say it minet john minet right i think or claude minet came up with actually and i might have discussed this in an earlier video uh he came up with a, a minet ball and uh named it after himself you know uh it was actually a little different than these that, that we ended up with you know using during the civil war and, and before and afterwards uh, it had a, a, I think it, I read it had a metal piece in the base and it helped to expand and all this kind of thing. But then we went to the skirt, uh, and I can't remember the guy's name, but it was actually perfected by somebody else. I want to say Thurber Burton or something like that actually perfected it. Okay. The one that we're actually using. Okay. So mini ball. Now, where am I? See, when you get to talking, you got to watch it with the muzzle loader. And I, I know I just loaded it and I was ready to put a cap on it. But one thing that's good to do, whenever you're in doubt, uh, just run your ramrod back down in there. And then I've got it notched and that notch should be about right there if it's loaded. So, you know, you've always got that safeguard. Now, there's no big danger if I put the powder in and got to talking with my buddy, you know, and uh, over here or something, we're at the shooting range and I forget to put a ball in there. What's going to happen? I'm just going to bring it up, put a cap on it and shoot a blank, right? You know, wonder why I missed the target. So, but the, the, the real danger is, and that's not likely to happen if you're experienced at all with this, is once you put that ball in there and you ram it, you make sure it goes all the way down. You know, because sometimes you've got a tight one, you put the mini ball in there, and I've demonstrated that, and you pound it down with this because it's tighter at the muzzle sometimes. And, and then you lay that down and then you use the ramrod to go the rest of the way. And I always do that in kind of one motion. So I don't have that issue ever happen, but so generally speaking, it's, it's, it's going to be either not loaded or, or loaded one or the other, not an in-between kind of, kind of thing. All right. So the old 1850, uh, model 1853 Enfield is quite a piece of hardware. And, uh, well, I'll talk about that nipple there issue. Cause I brought that up in the first video and, uh, I need to replace that. Let's see. Well, I ought to finish that pot off, but maybe I'll save it. And uh, let's wake up the gong. Try to. Got to hold low. Oh. <laughs> Look at that. Look at it move. I tell you what. There, I know a lot of you like the gong. We like the gong. That's why we hung up a gong. Uh, there's something really special about banging it with this thing. I, I don't know what it is. Partly because this thing has uh, got a little age on it and to be able to hit anything with it is, uh, is a bonus, just a bonus. Uh, if it even fired and it, you, know, you couldn't hit anything with it, it would be extra cool because of the age. It's uh, being used in the Civil War by the Confederacy and everything. This actual rifle, you know, uh, that is just so cool. And to be able to just hit anything, even a big gong, it's just so, so cool. And by the way, this will be the last uh, video we do 
basically rather you know, regular video that the old gong is going to be there we're going to replace it with an ar-500 gong okay so we can shoot maybe some other things out if we want to not that we're going to bang away at it with an ar-15 at this distance but uh but anyway we're going to go to ar-500 and that gong's been up there for 10 well probably 11 or 12 years okay for every video so it is historical and so we're going to uh put a few rounds on it while we do this how's that all right and we're going to do a video on that. You'll see it if you haven't seen it already. Okay, now I've got all my stuff out here. Uh, again, you've uh, you've seen this firearm by now, and uh, and uh, so I'm not going to go back into the history of it. But it is uh, extra cool. I use real black powder, generally Go X, and uh, I'm using about 55, 60 grains. I have a standard load, nothing exotic. Whoops, don't want to do anything strange especially in an old rifle like this although with black powder as i've talked about before it, you know the, the the margin of error is uh, is greater because with black powder as long as you have the bullet seated down on top of it uh whether you have like 50 grains or 70 grains doesn't create a uh, dangerous situation or anything okay might make it less accurate or whatever give you a little more recoil obviously but it doesn't make a big difference uh, just the black powder is different uh, the way it ignites and the way it burns and uh, it doesn't uh, act the same way modern powder does whereas with modern powder if you got you know 10 20 grains difference you might have a hand grenade in your hand okay but with black powder as long as your ball is all the way down on it you're okay out of the way. All right, let's go ahead and put one over here on this paper. Okay. Now, I forgot to put my ears on, but I'm going to go ahead and shoot anyway. <laughs> Shoots all the prints a little bit high. Uh, and with black powder and a big bore, you know, it, it probably doesn't hurt your ears as much as a 22. It's best to wear your ears anyway, though. But just a. Uh, just a, the fact that it's a big boomer, it's not all that fast. One thing I was going to point out to you about the nipple is I talked about in the first video how it, is blow, it blows the caps, it blows a hole in the cap and everything, and it doesn't seem right exactly and all that. And well, I took it off and uh, just this morning, in fact, and looked at it and inspected it more carefully. And it really has been reamed out or something. Uh, I mean, you can stick a pipe cleaner through it without any trouble or even something larger. Whereas I took one off of my replica infield and it has an itty bitty charge hole in it. Uh, so this is way too big. That's why it's getting too much force back out. It's not a dangerous situation really, but uh, I'm gonna try to find, I, I did a little search around the internet this afternoon. I, I couldn't find one. Uh, I was gonna put the uh, nipple from the replica in there, but uh, you know, for the video, but it would not fit. The threads are just a little different. As I started to tighten it up, it, it was starting to tighten like right away. It's, I mean, it's the same size essentially, but the threads are, are different. And I was gonna booger up the threads on this one, which I don't wanna do that, okay? So a little information about that. Uh, so if you have a, a tip on anybody that might have one, because these guns were made by several different uh, manufacturers, you know, as I talked about in the first video around Birmingham, England, and I don't know how consistent those threads are. Uh, I, I saw one somewhere, like 50 bucks, a nipple. I don't mind paying 50 bucks for it, but I, I hope it fits when I get it, it's a thing. So if you have one lying around the house, let me know. <laughs> and of course, one thing you can do here, I, I'll be careful about doing that. I'm not gonna run a patch down there yet because I'm gonna have to wet it down a little bit. All right, think about what you're doing here. A little powder back in it this is my dad's powder measure i got him into uh, into black powder back in the 70s and uh, he bought a hawking rifle kit put it together and got all the stuff and he really enjoyed it i don't think he shot it that many times but uh that was his measure and uh, so i've kept it alive kept it in use over you know last 10 20 years so uh, I've been doing this, uh, some things maybe I haven't talked about while we're doing this. I've been uh, shooting black powder since about 74 and uh, I don't shoot it every week, 
but I do enjoy it when I do it. Ooh, that's I, I lubed that one this morning, you can tell. And I, I, for these, I use Wonder Lube. There's several different. There's not a lot of difference, you know, in lube, you know, for the, the mini balls. You can, this stuff works great. Then there's probably 15 other things that work great. Or if you've got a little baby around, you can see how it is. And you have a lot of, you know, messy diapers. You can just bring one of those diapers out to the range and you got the same thing, essentially. Might not smell as good, but, you know, it'd work, I'm sure. All right, so there I go now, talking. I gotta get that, make sure that ball's all the way down. John's had a lot of experience with that kind of lube lately. <laughs> all right, having a little one around. I got a bunch of rags hanging out of my pocket and everything, you know, it's hot, we're sweating, and I'm getting uh, dirty, and you know, that's, that's the fun though of muzzle loading. Like it's really, really warm and humid today, but in some ways this is almost a good day to do it because you get messy and it, look at my hands already just after a few shots and we might as well be sweating to get it all at the same time. All right, I'll put my ears on this time. We're not, we may not shoot all these targets, but uh, I'm gonna have enough to shoot. I'm gonna finish that guy off though, I have to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was hot. Made some smoke. Definitely made some smoke. Woo! The nature of black powder is too, the pressure curve and everything is, again, that's why you can bury the load and it's not dangerous necessarily. It's, uh, it's just different. And it's also why an old gun like this can be used. If you had a firearm, and I don't know if I can think of a good example, but uh, a firearm that took cartridges that were really high pressure and smokeless powder, uh, you know, you might need to be more careful if it was made in the 1890s. Maybe, I don't know, a crag would be an example, maybe, or something. I, although they'll withstand any ammo that's loaded. You probably wouldn't want to load them up like really hot into a magnum load, even though they're designed for smokeless powder, because was, that was early on. But that's a cool thing about these old things, even though it's that old, I'll let you do the math, 1862 you can still shoot the things. Barrel's getting warm. Okay, 58 mini ball. And as we've discussed before, you put the powder in first, which I was about not to do, and that skirt expands. And that's what makes it uh, easier to load than a round ball and a pass generally. You know, where you have to fight the thing down there and get a really tight fit if you want an accurate round. But, uh, but with this, it goes down easily, but it, it expands into the rifling as it's coming out and so you got contact with the grooves the rifling so you still get the spin and the accuracy and it's just easier to load i really enjoy shooting them let's put some powder in all right i'll probably shoot a shoot a couple more times i think i probably need to kill a goat it's getting about dinner time and uh you know i always joke about y'all being late for dinner but really it's me i don't want to be hungry i don't want to be starving Hard to shoot when you're starving. All right, powder down in there. This is definitely something you don't want to do if you're in a hurry, you know. Uh, these only uh, see 577 balls, a little bit bigger. Yeah, don't even need the ball starter on those. Yeah, get me down there. All right. Yeah, I picked up that stick. That's a new stick, believe it or not, at uh, Ramrod at uh, Friendship, Indiana. Like I said, I, I went to Friendship, Indiana at the National Muzzleloading Shoot. Posted some pictures on Facebook. Hope you saw those. And uh, picked up some supplies. And uh, it's just neat being up there. Really puts you back in the mood for more primitive activities, like shooting these kinds of things. And uh, that, that happens to me every time I go to that. Uh, they have it in the fall and the spring. And I get back and I just want to shoot. <laughs> I want to shoot a muzzle loader and mess with his old dirty black powder. And uh, those of you who do this, uh, you know exactly what I'm talking about, you know, where I'm coming from. This mess and all this doesn't matter a bit. It's, it's what uh, makes it fun. Makes it fun. Have we really shot a two liter yet? I'm not sure we have. I'm gonna disturb that bird again. Oh, <laughs> oh man, who'd have thunk? We'll shoot one more. Who would have thunk after all these many years since 1860, 1862, that uh, 
this rifle would find new life at, at this range shooting uh, two liters and, and things like that. I do need a new nipple, okay? It just doesn't act right. It shoots all right, but uh, I just don't like the way it does that. It's definitely getting too much gas pressure back up up through it, and uh, I'll just replace that. But that's really the only thing I'm I'm going to replace. Uh, the gun sights and everything are there, original, beautiful old gun. It's in shootable condition too. It's not a museum piece. And, uh, and again, if you're new to black powder, you're new to uh, anything on this stuff, uh, dig back through and uh, you know look up our videos on the, the Springfield and some of the other muzzle loading uh, rifles we've done. We've got this in a replica, kind of a shorter version, 1858 version. We've got the Muscatoon, the really short version. Uh, just uh, several things, they're all fun. Lots of fun. We've got like I guess about two videos on all those firearms, at least. So, so I have to think of some new reasons to dig them out and shoot them some more. You want to watch with black powder? It's very easy to ignite. So you want to keep the can away from what you're doing generally. Okay. A lot of people are a little too nervous about black powder. You just got to be safe. It's like with firearms, anything associated with firearms. Uh, but, uh, you know, I've never seen anybody have any problem with it, but it can happen. I've heard of it. Getting a spark into your can or something. There we go. All right. Ram it on down. Right against it. And every time I do that, I am checking the notch, you know, on the, on the ramrod. Okay, so it should be like right there flush kind of. So that's the main thing I'm looking at. Not how difficult it is to get down or anything like that. I'm just lining up the notch. Okay. So what do you want me to shoot with the last shot? With this old baby. This old musket, rifle musket. Okay. Let's put my ears on. Uh, oh, I know what I was going to do. Even if it takes another shot, I've got to drop a ram. <laughs> okay, it'll blow her up again. I'll try one more shot at it. I hit one earlier today as I was just messing with it. <laughs> I, like I say, I have to hold low. I have to sight on the, when I'm shooting at the gong, little, almost a little below it. And on the rams, I think like right at right at their feet is is I thought it's where I needed to hold. So <laughs> we'll take one more at them. Okay, I, I love to hear the rams get hit because they fall over. There we go. All right, and again, I will advise anybody who really likes to shoot, likes a lot of different sorts of firearms, you need to try this. Don't worry about the mess. Just do it. Just do it. It's fun. All right. All right. Ball down. Notch. Now, the only thing is black powder is not available everywhere if you want to use really use use black powder uh, because it just isn't it's kind of a nuisance for some shops to uh, to have like they have to follow certain guidelines with it not like it's dynamite but they still have to follow different regulations so they just eh, I'm not gonna fool with that you know and uh, so they just don't but then there you'll find a shop around that has it or you can order it online actually okay again the problem with shooting this stuff is with all the smoke you don't know where you're hitting where you're missing <laughs> i'm gonna hold a, a little higher that might be a mistake i am <laughs> one more john i'm gonna shoot something else i gotta i can't quit on a miss it's funny because before the video, I, I knocked two rams down with one, one bullet. Uh, obviously, one fell against the other one. So, this is too much fun. I got to hear steel one more time, though. Got to hear a clang, clang something. Okay. Yeah, be careful. I don't keep you guys. 
all night here. I like to come out in the middle of the afternoon and just shoot the thing for maybe a couple of hours. How'd that be for a long video? And, and once you get it dirty, you might as well just go ahead and shoot it uh, <laughs> all day. And I'll do that. I'll shoot for an hour, mess with it, and uh, maybe go have lunch or something. Come back out and shoot it some more. Because uh, cleaning is the same, essentially, whether you have shot it once or a hundred times. All right. The ball down in there. Ram it down. All right. All right, last shot. So we've got to hear steel, no matter what. Even if we have to shoot that filing cabinet. Let's just uh, wake up the cowboy. How's that? <laughs> wow, look at him. Really rocked him. <laughs> wow, sure got him over on the left. I might be flinching or something with that trigger jerking or pulling too hard. It really is a, a tough trigger to get used to. It's uh, stiff. But I'd rather it be stiff than be uh, too light. So uh, anyway, I do plan to shoot the thing occasionally, like I said in the first video. Uh, regardless of age, not going to hurt it. It's going to look the same. If I might clean it up and soak it down in ballastol and clean inside and out, it's going to be exactly like it was yesterday before I fired it. And uh, so it's not going to really wear or anything. It's not a museum piece, although it's not in bad shape. So pretty cool. The uh, 1853 pattern uh, infield used extensively in the American Civil War, particularly by the Confederacy. Okay, make sure you have seen the first video. So you'll know, oh, maybe about that much more than you know from watching this one. So. We appreciate you all coming by and watching. We appreciate you supporting the people that support us. And we definitely appreciate their support, the NRA, Bud's Gun Shop, SDI, uh, Federal. Uh, we just are uh, lucky fellows and we have a, have a good time doing this. And uh, I'm glad you guys come by and, and watch us, you guys and gals. Life is good. I hope you guys enjoyed that because I know I sure did. Well, I've got you here. I wanted to let you guys know about our friends over at SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute. They are a fully accredited online distance learning program where you can be certified in gunsmithing and you can also get an associate's degree in firearms technology. And they also do a lot of work with veterans. They accept the GI Bill. They also have hands-on experience even though it's a distance learning program. Uh, so just wanted to let you guys know about them. Also, you can find them at sdi.edu. Uh, that's the Sonoran Desert Institute. And also, um, just want to let you guys know we have merchandise now. So if you want to uh, buy any Hickok 45 merchandise, you can go over to our store. The link is in the description of every video. And there's also a link kind of on the header of the uh, main uh, channel page, the, the, the main YouTube channel. And so we've got that. And also, if you want to find more of our content in other places, it's everywhere. Um, you can go to full30.com. We have uh, most or all of our videos over there. You can also find us on Facebook, Hickok45 Facebook. Um, you can find Hickok45 on Instagram. Uh, I think it's the real Hickok45 over there. And then also on Twitter is Hickok45. And then me, the son, the and son, John Hickok. You can find me at uh, Hickok45 and son on YouTube. I also do a podcast called Gun Culture Radio, which you can find on that YouTube channel and also on iTunes. And there's also a John Hickok Facebook page, which you can find the link to on the Hickok 45 and Son channel page. There's a link over there. And uh, that's all I can think of for now. It's a lot to digest. So you're going to want to think about that for a little bit and then watch one of these other videos that's like down there or over there somewhere because um, some of these look pretty good.